So before we get into anything, I guess like general, I'm really interested in what you do. So what is, what's your official title? Uh, I am the executive director of the Human Trafficking and Social Justice Institute at the University of Toledo. All right. So I guess what I've been seeing lately, um, obviously there's some of the hashtag save the children that's been mm -hmm. kind of everywhere. Um, but we have like a lot of local stories here. Um, especially lately, it feels like, but it, it seems like people are really desperate for ways that they can actually get involved and have an impact. So mm -hmm. what locally is available for the everyday person to do to get involved? Yeah, well, we have uh, Lucas County Human Trafficking Coalition. So that coalition accepts anyone who's ready to get involved in the fight against trafficking and we meet every third wednesday of the month from 9 15 a.m to 11 a.m via zoom so all someone has to do is look up lucas county human trafficking coalition and find out when our next meeting will be held and get involved you visit six times and find out if it's a good match and then we vote you onto the coalition as a member um, and <clears throat> get involved where you're comfortable. So there are various committees to join, education committee, program and services, fundraising. So wherever you're comfortable being involved, you can get involved. The other thing that we have is an online network. So it's the Emancipation Nation Network. It's free to join. You just Google those three words and uh, they'll ask some questions and then you come into a network with over 450 other anti-trafficking advocates from across the country and around the world, all doing things to fight trafficking. Um, so we also have in our own community, the International Annual Human Trafficking and Social Justice Conference. That is the largest uh, academic conference in the nation we bring over 2,000 people to the conference, have this year over 70 presenters. We'll meet uh, September 23rd to, through 25th. And you can go to traffickingconference.com and the world will come to you on the screen. And we have over 70 presenters who are experts in the field from across the country and around the U.S. It seems like it really is actually like a pretty good time to get involved. You don't even have to leave your house. You can just kind of hop in. But would you say Absolutely. maybe then the first step, like the easiest step, if you're, you know, you don't know where to begin, would maybe be to join then that Lucas County, if you're in the area, the Lucas County Human Trafficking Coalition. And with those Absolutely. meetings, can you just, so you, you see, you, you like you look it up and you see where it is. Um, can you just join in that Zoom call without, doing anything else or do you need to sign up somehow nope you just join into the zoom call and um check it out and see what we're up to what we're about you'll see that we're very very busy you'll see that there is a diversity of people in terms of their fields of practice their professions we have faith-based communities survivors so once you get involved um you may love it because we've had people who are moms, you know, and they say, well, I don't, I don't have any particular skill to bring to the coalition. Yes, you do. Everyone has talents they can bring. If your talent is talking to people on the phone or your talent, hey, I can be the secretary, I can type up stuff or hey, I'm really good at presenting or whatever it is we can use that skill and that talent and we need you. So if you have the time, come to the coalition. If you say, I don't have time to sit on Zoom calls, that's okay. We have lots of organizations in town that need people who can raise awareness, who can raise money, who can support their cause because there isn't any organization in town right now flush with cash that does this work. All the organizations are 
really steps away from almost closing their doors and they're trying to do good work every single day. So there is a place for you and not just a place where we make you busy, but there is a meaningful place for you to do good work. Wow. Um, is there anything specific that you all are working on right now that you'd be open to sharing? Right now we're organizing the conference. So okay. we, yeah, we have a whole day that's just devoted to high school students and teach them about human rights and human trafficking so they can stay safe. Um, and then we have our days with the formal um, presentations and conference. So that's what we're all busy working on now because all the money that we earn from the conference, we, it goes back into our institute at the University of Toledo to continue to do our research and do our work. And some of it goes to our local coalition that then gives some out to community members who are working directly with victims. So all of our money stays right here in Lucas County to support the work. Great, that's awesome. I'm sure organizing something of that scale takes a very long time. A lot of yes. work. Yes. <laughs> well, but we also, we train people to be presenters. So if your passion is increasing awareness, we actually offer trainings that teach you how to present and how to present accurate information because what's happening there's a lot of myths flying around and a lot of sensationalized stories and a lot of things that are just scaring the community and just really aren't commonplace anyway and seem pretty rare so you know coming to the coalition learning the accuracy learning what human trafficking really is coming to the conference going to the sessions so if you really want to make a difference you really have to learn um what human trafficking really is how it happens how they recruit people the red flags and who to call i was actually that leads me perfectly into the next kind of chunk i wanted to discuss because and please correct me if i'm wrong but my understanding um at least with with that hashtag going around it seems like there's a lot of conspiracy and these mm -hmm. like you said scenarios that you just don't see as often um mm -hmm. so it seems like to me a lot of times when it comes to trafficking, it can be somebody that the person knows um, individually, mm -hmm. or it's, um, mm -hmm. can, you, can you kind of, I guess, explain maybe what, what a more common scenario might look like? Yeah, so more commonly, uh, vulnerable kids are involved and traffickers look very safe and they meet kids in very safe looking places, not in seedy, creepy back alleys, but very safe looking places. They look very safe. They may be 14 or 15 coming and meeting up with somebody who's 14 or 15. Girls and boys can be victims. And they eventually befriend you. It's more about manipulation and getting you one step closer, one step closer, one step closer until they get you to participate along with them in your own victimization. They begin to chain your mind, chain your heart. And then you're not going to run away because you love them, but you also greatly fear them. That is trafficking. It's not really about snatching and grabbing people off the street. And I mean, that does happen. But those are the stories that make it to CNN. Those are the stories that make it to Hollywood, you know, but the more common experience is this overtime manipulation. And so what's flying around is all this snatching and grabbing. And it's more a description of kidnapping and abduction than it is about trafficking. And what happens when those myths get out there is that the people that have the money, the power, the resources, the influence, hear these stories about snatching and grabbing people from Kroger's in the suburbs or something. And then they start moving, making moves to bring resources to communities that already have a lot of protective factors. And when you have limited resources, you move them away from kids 
who are the most vulnerable. So not only is it, it's not like a do no harm, it's like you're actually doing harm because the first thing you're gonna do is run to your communities when you have power and influence. You're gonna make sure your communities are protected. They're already pretty, a lot of protective factors, particularly since you are there. Yeah. And away from kids who are vulnerable, kids who run away from home, who have been involved in child protection, who, you know, this, this myth about anybody can be trafficked. Well, yes, that is, I should say, technically true. Anybody can be trafficked, like you can get struck by lightning. But the literature is pretty clear on who's being trafficked. And it's kids who are vulnerable, kids who are in need, basic needs, kids who live in poverty. Those are the kids at most risk. So when you panic and you run out to protect the suburbs, you actually take resources, needed resources, critical resources away from kids who are truly vulnerable. And so I appreciate people jumping out there, protesting, marching, save, save the children. But when you have limited time, money, and resources, you need to be educated before you go out and try to educate and promote awareness because you could be taking valuable resources away from kids who need it. Wow. That's what that's I think a big reason why I wanted to talk about this because it seems like a lot of well intentioned people are just seeing things and going with it. Um, and so I'm hoping I can provide I can help educate them, I guess, and give them some resources. And it seems like it makes it makes sense that the most vulnerable children might be the most susceptible to this. I mean, they're already searching for for love and for connection in a community. And when they they're probably an an easier target for someone who's trying to manipulate in that way. And that's absolutely really scary. Absolutely. They're already, yeah. They're already struggling for resources as it is. And then in terms mm -hmm. of this, um, is and it really is, it's, it's the definition of institutionalized privilege because institutionalized privilege is when you provide everything to the people who need it least and you provide least to the people who need it most. So if you want to protect children, then you go to the children first who need it the most. Absolutely. So trying to think, um, is there, would you say there's a certain age group that would be the most vulnerable if you had to, if you mm -hmm. had to pinpoint a demographic that was the most at risk, how would you describe it? Well, we know through research who's at risk. So runaways are, our number one risk factor in our community. And so we're working very hard with the Sheriff's Department, Toledo Police. They are working to locate runaways, connect them to uh, rescue mental health services, to safety net shelter, juvenile court assessment center, and all the wonderful services we have. And then from there, connecting them to even longer term services. So we're going directly where kids are most vulnerable developing interventions, implementing those interventions. Other kids are kids that have been involved in juvenile court, kids that have been abused or neglected, kids who live in poverty, um, kids who are involved in substance abuse, kids who have mental health issues, kids who have educational difficulties. Those are the kids that are most vulnerable and those are the ones that traffickers or their recruiters are likely to befriend, and then introduce them to the trafficker, and then it goes on from there. So um, running to probably the church in the suburbs to teach people about human trafficking is good, but like I said, if you have limited time, go to those neighborhoods, those communities, those faith-based communities, those social service programs, and promote awareness there and once you promote awareness, develop some interventions or work with us to develop interventions because what your goal hopefully is, is to truly make a difference. Not just march, not just post memes on Facebook. Um, we have enough of that, we don't need that. We need people who join our coalition. There are 21 coalitions across Ohio. Plenty of ways for you to get connected and plugged in um, join a coalition. Don't get out there and reinvent the wheel. Um, connect with people, collaborate with people who can move in the same direction with you uh, as quickly as you want to go. 
so if someone, I guess scale, scaling it down a little bit more, if someone just wants to be aware, but maybe doesn't have time to join these groups, um, but they may just want to be aware of the people in their own life. Maybe they're a teacher or, you know, I mean, even a parent or mm -hmm. just someone in a child's life, what signs should they be looking out for in someone who mm -hmm. may be going through this? Well, there's a great website called polarisproject.org, um, and they have great fact sheets and real simple red flag indicators to be looking for, and there are lots of them, and, you know, they'll show you what to look for in schools and what to look for in healthcare facilities yeah. and what to look for in social service programs. But in general, you know, you might be looking for a kid who's missing blocks of time for in school, perhaps. Perhaps they miss a week of school here and there, a couple of days. Or maybe a kid that says, I'm going to spend the weekend with my friend over here, but really they're being sold all weekend. Or maybe um, a kid that has a new iPhone or a new bling on their wrist or something like that. And you know their whole family can't afford that. Maybe their whole outfit is worth $10, but they have a $200 bracelet. Where'd you get that? Who gave that to you? Maybe they're 14 and their boyfriend's 27. Why would a 27-year-old want to go out with a 14-year-old? Maybe they have a hotel room key card or a hotel room key, one of those old-time motels that still exist. Um, or maybe they've changed and adopted new friends. Uh, maybe they don't want you to see what they're, who they're talking to online. Um, you know, maybe they have created a, not an Instagram account, but a Finstagram account where it's a fake Instagram account. Um, so all of these things, if they're, if they're hiding friends, those type of things, you have to really get involved in your kids' lives today. It's not, you don't want to be your kid's friend. I agree with that. You also don't want to be that 1950s parent who you follow my rules and do what I say, and I don't want to know anything else, because that is a recipe for disaster. You want to be both. You want to be parent enough to give good, wise advice. You want to be friend enough to be trusted to hear scary things from your child. They have to trust you to be able to tell you the scary things and that the things that they fear and the things that they worry about. They have to be able to tell that to you. You don't want them to go tell it to another 14-year-old because you have a 14-year-old brain that's going to give them the wise, you know, decision. You want to be able to help navigate your child's life. And so you have to be that integrated parent now. You can't be the friend and you can't just be the strict parent. You have to be the hybrid of both. How can parents, that's, it's, it seems like such a fine line and I'm sure it's, I mean, I'm not a parent myself, but I couldn't imagine trying to navigate this with especially the internet, which I feel like I, I want to get into in a little bit here, but how can, how can parents find that balance between, yeah, being comfortable enough with each other to open up, but mm -hmm. like strict enough to where they know what's going on and have rules that are followed? Yeah, you have to start the conversation as a parent. Um, you have to start that conversation about human trafficking, and it's, it's none of these are the talk, you know, these are a series of talks. It's a conversation. Those are things that regularly occur in your house. That's the way you want to create it. So you want to talk about things like sexually transmitted infections and HIV and rape and uh, sex trafficking and labor trafficking. You want to, you want to have a household that there is regular conversations about that because then you give kids permission to talk about that if you talk about that. And so you also have to watch your conversation because as things came up, you know, the Bill Cosby rape case and these very famous cases, you know, what was your conversation about? Because there were little ears around listening, like the Epstein case. And what, what did you say? Because when you're not paying attention and you're just talking to your friend on the phone or you're talking to your friends in the house and you're not paying attention, but there's young people listening and they're taking their cues off of what you thought. So when you said, oh, that, that wasn't true, that didn't happen, then you're telling young people, don't come and tell me when something scary, embarrassing, stigmatizing happens to you. So you always have to watch your conversation and you have to open up 
you know, that way of talking. Like that is the way we talk in this house. We discuss things that are uncomfortable. That's what we do. And if you start to get comfortable with it, then you get permission for other little people in your house to get comfortable with the conversation. That makes perfect sense. So I guess then circling back to the internet, um, obviously I feel like that's a tool that's been utilized. I mean, again, even locally with the, um, we just had a guy indicted um, who was in Toledo and it was his friend's kid. And then there's an Elmore cop who's accused of, you know, looking at child pornography. And mm -hmm. I, I, it's hard, I guess, to, it, it's such a weird thing, I guess, to go on. And I'm sure it's incredibly hard for parents to try and keep an eye mm -hmm. on because kids are crafty. And then especially if there's something they want to cover up, they're going to be trying to, but <laughs> that's right. Um, does that look, how different does trafficking through the internet look in terms of, you know, just the, the mm -hmm. in-person interaction? Yeah. Well, first I want to say, I agree. Kids are crafty and they will outsmart you every time <laughs> and they can that, outlast yeah. you uh, and you will fall asleep before they will and they can sneak out. So they will, <laughs> they will beat you every time. And so that's why it's important to have the relationship, the hybrid relationship where you are, you represent a safe person that they can talk to. That's why, because they will outsmart and particularly technologically, okay. you don't stand a chance. So that's why you have to build this trusting relationship between you and your child so that they do have conversations and they do tell you what's happening. Um, the other thing is that, you know, customers of kids, they're not the creepy guy living under the bridge, right? Because the creepy guy under the bridge can't afford uh, the premium product, which is sold at a high price. When you buy a, a teenager, that's, that's expensive. So it's not like you have to have money in your pocket. You have to be working a job where you have that kind of disposable income. So when kids are online, it's very easy for potential customers, predators, and traffickers to befriend a child. First of all, um, young people tend to show their vulnerabilities online. They say things like, I want to be loved and desired. Okay, they don't say that, but the way they say it is they say, look at this selfie, look at this selfie, look at my butt here, look at my body here. Look, I'm, you know, so they're saying, I want to be loved, I want to be desired. And that's not unusual because everybody wants to be loved and everybody wants to be desired. Um, they will say things like, I want to be treated like an adult. Now, they don't say that. They use the whatever language, you know, I'm so sick of my parents treating me like a kid. I can't wait to get out of here. Well, then I come up next to you if I'm a trafficker. Hey, baby girl, we can talk like you are grown, like you are, you're hot. You look great. You're whatever they, they're going to answer that vulnerability. They're going to try to connect with that young person and make that person believe this is my new best friend. I have to run everything by this new friend because they care about me more than anybody. They connect with me more than anybody. They love me more than anybody. It's like I've known this person my whole life. And that's the way they do it. And online, I can do that with three, five, three to five vulnerable girls or boys. I don't have to wait and meet you in person to do that. And that's what makes the internet even more scary. So I guess... For, for parents, then, I, I, to me, it just seems like the internet is more, like, I feel like the internet could happen to anybody, because it doesn't matter what walk of life you're in, or what circumstance you're in, mm -hmm. all of these kids are on these apps, they're all using them, and mm -hmm. all of them going, especially the ones going through puberty, are having those mixed feelings, like you've mm -hmm. described, so I don't know, I guess in my head, and this is, again, please correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. it seems like this could really be happening under parents' roofs and they might not have any idea, you know, That's if, if they're absolutely exchanging true. pictures. Um, yeah, and uh, when you're on the internet, when you're online, it becomes more of an equal playing field in terms of risk. The difference is when you have more protective factors in your family, in your community, in your space, 
then you learn to separate the hype from reality. For instance, um, you know, kids look at the Kardashians, they look at, you know, all of these Barbies, um, you know, all these things. You can't, you can hardly watch television without the message coming loud and clear that you need to be size two, that, you know, your breasts, however, need to be as big as they can be. And your butt needs to be as big as it can be, but your waist needs to be as tiny as it can be as if you, you know, anatomically that doesn't even go together. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and your hair should be long and your eyelashes should be out, you know, two inches. And all that is saying to you as a girl that your value as a woman is how pleasing you can look to men. Now, it, and that's reinforced every single day in magazines and televisions every, every single day. When you have protective factors and people around you that are pro-social adults, they teach you and mentor to you that that's just the hype. That's not reality. But when you're a kid that is, um, has more risk factors and doesn't have as many pro-social adults around you, then you can't, you can't separate in your young mind often that that's just the hype. See, so when you get online, when you go about your day, then you start to emulate those things that you think are reality. And it even makes you more vulnerable when you're online. So you can't tell, you know, um, the hype of what somebody's telling you about yourself or the way you present yourself. Uh, you can't, you don't always learn to separate those two. Would you say there are different um, indicators for like if a, if a child is being trafficked on the internet or um, being trafficked in person, is there something different you would look out for for that form of trafficking? Yeah, I would definitely look out for people who are trying to move that young person to talk, to have more sexual conversations, to start joking sexually with sexual kind of uh, tone to it, I guess, but start um, showing suggestive pictures, asking for suggestive pictures. People who are predators or traffickers are going to try to move that young person into that space as quickly as possible. They're going to start it subtly, but then they're going to start moving that young person into that space because they want that young person to think that this is the norm, that it's common. Um, and so I would be on the lookout for that. I would also be, you know, if somebody has a friend online that I don't know about as a parent or somebody that the, that you don't want to tell me about, then that's definitely going to be a red flag. Uh, where you set the computer up in your house, um, the hours that young people can be on the computer, who's in the room, who's not in the room when they're on the computer. All of those things are very important because again, you will not be able to outsmart. There are apps that are popping up and closing down all the time. As soon as you learn the latest app or the latest game or the latest website or whatever, it's gone and there's a new one. So you will never be able to keep up um, you know, with what they're doing. It's all about relationship. So if you teach them to be cautiously optimistic, right, in yeah. real life, like this may be a great friend. It may not. Um, you don't want to talk to anybody online that you don't know. If you do insist on doing that because all the kids are doing that, then I want to be in the room. And if kids understand that I'm wiser and I want to just protect you, but I understand as a parent that love is good. And I understand that connection is good. I can't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> because if I forget that, then kids go behind my back. <laughs> but I have to remember relationship is good. That's how young people grow into adults. Love is good. Infatuation is good. And I want to nurture that in my young person. But I want to make sure they understand that I need to keep them safe. And if they know we accept where they're going anyway biologically to love and be loved then they're more likely to trust us if we tell them don't don't ever talk to anybody in life don't ever talk to a boy never kiss anybody in your life you're never leaving this house okay that's 
that's not going to go over well. Yeah. And they're going to figure out a way to connect with other people. They're, they're going to figure it out. So relationship is important so that you can guide them and keep them safe. That, that brought up another thing in my head too. I, I, I was trying to figure out, there has to be a fine line then too between I don't know, I guess if I was a parent, all this stuff, it just, it makes you so scared. You know, you want to keep your kids locked up in the house, but I mean, you can't do that, you know, and you don't want to just obviously let them have free reign in instances like this. How do you, how do you find that balance, not just in your relationship, but, you know, mm -hmm. figuring out who you can trust, because sometimes this does happen with people, even you're close to as a parent, like, you know, it's, it's scary to trust people right now. It's very scary, but I think if we have empathy as a parent, um, if we remember what we were trying to do at 14 and 15 and 16, and if we remember that this is an age where they're interested in having a partner, their first boyfriend, their first girlfriend, they're interested in trying to navigate the world. And if we understand that that's a thing that they need to do and want to do, and if we can walk alongside them and help them do that safely, then I think that we're being the parent that we need to be because, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, all wonderful, but there are also other skills that young people need to learn. They need to be cautious, you know, and uh, the only thing you're going to risk in that scenario is maybe you produce a little bit more paranoid young people, <laughs> but that's okay. I'd rather go with that. Um, as long as they know the dangers and they can ask me about certain things, um, particularly if they're um, gay teens or the LBGTQ community, because, you know, the, those kids are at higher risk. And when they run away, they're two and a half times more likely to be trafficked. So being able to support who they are and help guide them as well to find relationship and to be safe about it is going to be a benefit because you're, as a parent, you're teaching your child all kinds of, from tying their shoes to how to show love and kindness to finding good partners, all those things. That's, that's what you provide the guidance for. We also know that kids with developmental disabilities are at higher risk. So um, we know that foreign born kids that are here in the US are at higher risk. So we just have to take that extra care and you know, be the best parent we can so that they trust us enough to allow us into their lives and to help guide them. So let's say, I mean, I, I, I know probably not too many teens are watching you know, are, are looking at our website or anything, but say you are a, a teen who finds themselves in this position and they don't have parents that they've made that connection with, where can they go? Who can they talk to? They can absolutely talk to a mentor, a teacher. Um, you know, the research says that kids do very well when they have a long-term pro-social adult in their life. It doesn't say they do better because they have two parents. They do better because they have one parent. It says they do better when they have a long-term pro-social adult. So it can be a mentor. It can be an uncle. It can be an aunt. It can be a grandma. It can be a teacher. Somebody that young people trust to guide them and to give them good advice on what they should do. And I would say if you're a young person, who is that person in your life? And if you don't have one, who can you start to put your eye on that would be good? Somebody that you know is wise, somebody that has navigated their life um, and come out okay. Attach yourself to that person. You don't have to wait for an adult to come up to you. Get good, solid, strong advice from somebody who's a mentor. I still do it. <laughs> so I find mentors that I can run my thoughts through and they can help guide me so that I'm safe, so that I'm productive, so that I get to the places in life that I still want to go. So I don't think there's any shame in your game. Get somebody <laughs> who's product productive, get somebody who's awesome and say, hey, you are going to be my mentor. <laughs> and it's, 
such a flattering thing. I don't know that they'll turn you down, but that will help you navigate your life and stay as safe as you possibly can and be free and, and put your life on the trajectory that you really dream about. 